global wind patterns are somewhat complex. You have your planetary winds, and they're named based on direction they, the direction that they come from, right? And also, you have your, your winds that move in a circular motion, and they rise and fall at certain latitudes. So, for example, in this image right here, you, you see, you notice you have a circular motion of, of air. And that circular motion is called convection, or this would be an example of a convection cell. So typically, as you can see in this image, and as it says in the caption, warm air rises at the equator. As it rises, it cools, and eventually it condenses and forms cloud. And if you have enough moisture, it's going to uh, precipitate. Okay, so as air cools, air cools as it moves away from the equator, and at about, at about 30 degrees latitude north or south, the dense air falls towards the Earth's surface. So what happens, warm air rises. Warm air rises because it's less dense. So at the equator, where you have your, your planetary winds when they converge or come together, and also where you have where you have the most direct sunlight, you're going to have the heating of the Earth's surface. So the heating of the Earth's surface causes the air to rise, and it forms an area of low pressure. And as it rises, it cools, condenses, expands, forms clouds, and then you have precipitation. Now, as it rises, eventually it's going to cool. And as it cools, the air becomes denser. And when it becomes denser, it comes back down. Now, air, sinking air, causes high pressure. So at latitudes 30 north and 30 south, the pressure is going to be high. But at the same time, you're going to have warm, dry air. The reason why it's warm, dry air is the opposite to the reason why you have warm, moist air. Dry air, sinking air, you're not forming, uh, the air is not cooled. So being that it's not cooled, you don't have the opportunity to for the air to fall to the dew point temperature, for it to condense and to have, or to have uh, precipitation. So in these areas at 30 degrees latitude north, 30 degrees latitude south, okay, you're going to have your dry, your dry regions or your desert regions. At zero degrees latitude, obviously you're going to have your warm and wet regions. Okay, and we can see this from this diagram right here. Uh, again, at the equator, you're going to have low pressure because the air is rising. Then, during the convective process, you're going to have sinking air at 30 degrees latitude north and south, right? But you're also going to have rising air because of how the circulation of the uh, of the, the convection cells, you're going to have rising air at 60 degrees latitude north and 60 degrees latitude south. And again, you're going to have more moisture and you're going to have lower pressure and again, sinking air at the poles. Now, the names of these cells, we should know. So between latitudes, uh, or well, latitude zero at the equator and 30 latitude north, these are your Hadley cells, okay? These are your Hadley cells. Between latitudes 30 and 60 north, it's your feral cell, okay? So just try to remember that, that's your feral cell. And from 60 degrees latitude north and the North Pole, those, that's going to be your polar cell. And that makes sense, is at the poles. So you call it your polar cells.